Hey everybody, it's me Stacy and it's time for Saturday with Stacy YouTube number 267. So this is class 267. Normally I would be able to look down at a piece of paper and it would tell me that because it's usually on our blue winner winner chicken dinner paper, but I don't have that in front of me today. I don't. Why? Well, because the last YouTube was our anniversary sale YouTube, where when you post a comment, we pick a hundred winners as part of our anniversary sale. For all of you online peeps who aren't able to get to sunny California to share the anniversary event as was it extravaganza with us. So we pick a hundred prizes and a hundred winners. And I'm taping this on Thursday, hoping it loads. <laughs> That's why I'm taping it early. Taping it on Thursday, so, and you're not gonna see it until Saturday, so if we pick the winner winner chicken dinners right now, if you posted your comment on Friday, you wouldn't stand a chance of winning. <laughs> so, I will be back with a separate YouTube. I always do a separate YouTube because it, it takes me a little time to get through those hundred names and the mispronunciations of them and the thanking you for forgiving me for mispronouncing your name. <laughs> that YouTube just as soon as we've got all of those winners sorted and in order. So today is number 267 and it is the next collection of Simply Defined. Now Simply Defined kind of got passed in September because of the anniversary sale. We had to hold the collection back a week so that the anniversary sale could go off without a hitch and what that means is that October is going to have two releases it's gonna have a release now of Simply Defined and then later in the month it will have the actual October release for you. We've had a great day down in the store today. Oh my goodness, we've had two lovely ladies from the land of Oz. Ozzy, 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 oi, oi, oi. <laughs> and they've had a wonderful day. I hope they were just a pleasure to have in the store. And we, I wish they were gonna be here for Saturday, but Nope, they're off to New York for a wedding. So just a big thank you to both of them for coming in and sharing their day with us. They made a special trip all just to see us. It was just amazing and so honored. So, so honored and humbled to have all of you when you do get to the store. We just love each and every one of you. So the store, they're still downstairs. I had to come upstairs on YouTube, even though, because it's a Thursday and I want to make sure it loads. So again, today is Simply Defined and there's absolutely a story behind this collection. There's just, there's always a story behind the collections. I can't not have, I have to relate to something. I'm just not a person who can sit and go, oh, I think I'm gonna do flowers today and then draw pretty flowers. That's not me. I have to kind of feel it because designing is not my forte. It's not what I do best. I think negotiating is what I do best. <laughs> so, so when I sat down to do this collection, this is my kind of guy collection for, for the second half of this year. I'm, I'm doing, it's sort of a guy release. And, and the collection's name is Strength is in Presence. And, and it absolutely has to do with my dad. The story has to do with my dad. And so again, the collection's name is Strength is in Presence. And so I know I've told you about my dad, but those of you who don't know, uh, he passed away three years ago, three years and, a, and two weeks ago, and my mom passed away one year and a week ago. It's been a bad week, <laughs> but let's not go there. So I would tell you stories about my dad, and maybe what you didn't know is just how tiny he was. My dad was a small guy, bless his pea picking heart, and my mom was small too. I mean, my dad was maybe five foot one, and my mom was about five foot, and I'm like five foot eight, so I'm not exactly sure where I came from, but shh. We won't question it now, right? <laughs> My mom never owned up to anything, so <laughs> we're just gonna leave it where it is. Now, my mom and dad had, I have two sisters and a brother, and they are way older than me. They're, they're plenty enough older than me. And they were actually born in Oregon and Washington, the state of Oregon and Washington on Indian reservations up in Oregon and Washington because my dad is part Indian. So Yakima and Wapato and I mean, they lived in Primeville, Oregon and Walla Walla and I mean, just everywhere in Oregon and Washington. But they decided to come back here, California, to California where my mom's parents were and where my mom was born and raised and just a little bit outside of Beverly Hills. And they came back flat broke. <laughs> 
not a penny to their name. I mean, my understanding is when they drove from, from Oregon and Washington back to California, they ate bologna sandwiches because that's all. They got a loaf of bread and a thing of bologna and some chips and that's no stopping at McDonald's. There was no McDonald's back then. There was no money for McDonald's. And in the Volkswagen Squareback, which was this ugly beige color, they came back here to California. And this was before I was even a twinkle in their eye. Not sure how much of a twinkle, but... <laughs> But anyway, so they moved in with my grandma and my grandpa, and my dad had to find a job. Here he's living with his in-laws with three small children. My brothers and sisters are less than three years apart from each other, and then me, long way away. Can you say, oops? <laughs> but my dad, he had to find a job. So he went to work for Prudential Life Insurance. Now, he didn't start in the mail room. He started as a life insurance salesman. And back then, he they were given territories. And my dad was given Watts as his territory. And he would go door to door trying to sell life insurance to a community that probably was struggling all on their own and life insurance was not the most important thing for them. I'm thinking milk and eggs and bread were probably way more important than life insurance. So my dad would, would work every day and go out and do his job and try and sell life insurance. And he slowly but surely worked his way up to in Prudential. And eventually my dad, I was finally born. <laughs> yep, I happened, hello. My dad would take me to work with him. He would pull me out of school, out of elementary school, which was unheard of back then, unheard of. There was no take your kid to school day or take your daughter to school day or take your son to school day. But my dad would pull me out of school on average, I want to say once a month, and he would take me to work with him. And that was when there was still secretary pools and the secretaries were in a line and all these typewriters were going. And I would sit with the secretaries and they would have me stamp envelopes or whatever. I had my job to do. And I had to do my job so that I could go to lunch with the secretaries. And and dad would come out and I would have to do my job because by now he had worked his way up to a manager at Prudential and he had an office and everything. So he would also take me to conferences for Prudential. And he would win these conferences by being a top salesperson of life insurance. And sometimes, well, my mom didn't get to go to the conference in Hawaii. She didn't because she was pregnant with me. Oh, she was not happy. My dad went without her. Can you believe that? He went, he wasn't going to miss a trip to Hawaii, but my mom was so pregnant with me. She didn't get to go. I think a plate was thrown at my dad's head. Not a hundred percent sure. Cause I wasn't there, but that's the story. <laughs> so my dad would win these conferences and he would take me often. And one of these conferences was down in San Diego and it was a lavish conference and I had to wear a really pretty dress and I could only speak when spoken to and I was probably the youngest person there because because most husbands brought their wives and so on and so forth but not a lot of kids so I was surrounded by all of these amazing people who would treat me fabulously but I would listen to my dad do business I would sit there and listen he would I would have to like I said children were to be seen and not heard but I was to be listening and and so part of the conference he had these tickets to the wild animal kingdom. This is when you used to drive your car around the safari park. Yes, you drove your car in the safari park and the animals would kind of come up to your car or not. <laughs> and, and we got to go through the wild animal park down in San Diego and for us, that was, for me, that was a big deal. My parents didn't have we, any money. We were very, very, very plain Jane, middle class at best. So while we were driving, my dad would stop and he would point out the different animals and he would say, look at them, they're just sitting there. And I said, well, I mean, I'm a kid. I'm like, yeah, but are they gonna come up to the car? And he said, no, just look at them. Look at these animals. You may never see these animals again. They're in a zoo. They're here. He said, just pay attention to the animals and look at them sitting and look at how majestically they sit up and, and, and how they follow and, and they, they, they just, their presence is known. He, he said, they have such strength. 
by just sitting. Well, okay, I'm young. I'm like, ah, <laughs> whatever, <laughs> okay. So I'm, I'm trying to be respectful and go, mm -hmm, yes, daddy. And, and we would drive around and he would point them out. And again, you know, they weren't coming up to the car, but you would see them standing there almost perfectly still, like not moving at all. And then every now and then you'd see a little move from one of them. And he, again, look at how majestic, look at the strength that these animals have. Look at the presence that they have. And I thought about that now. And I thought about when my dad would take me on sales calls with him to go sell life insurance, kind of like when I went to the conference. It was very much I was to be seen and not heard, but I would be paying very close attention to my dad and what he was saying. And he had the strength and presence. It wasn't so much about what my dad said to these, these people, but but how he said it, or even more importantly, what he didn't say. My dad, even as small as he was, could walk into a room and command your presence. You had to look at him because he had this strength in him. For being five foot one, he had this strength in him. And, and I remember him taking me to that animal park and driving around and wanting me to appreciate these animals the way he saw them. They were not roaring and, and, and galloping everywhere and the zebras were not zebraing off. They were just standing there, but they were so majestic and had such beauty and s said so much without saying nothing at all. You could see the strength of these animals without saying anything. And that was my dad. Really, he was a loud mouth like me. He liked to talk a lot too. But his strength was really being able to, to, to have this presence and knowing what not to say. Sometimes sitting there and standing there and just observing and just being is the strength that's needed. So when I put this collection together, I went back to the animal park. And, and I hope that you like what I've done. It's something I, I mean, this is way out of on the limb for me, but I think it honors what my dad was trying to put forth. That, that strength isn't about, isn't about how, how strong you are or who can yell the loudest or who has the most money or who has the most toys. Strength is about being inside of you and and knowing who you are and then being being okay with that and knowing that sometimes not saying a single word is the strongest thing of all. So I'm gonna tilt down and I'm gonna bring you these collections and I've got a lot to show you and we're gonna go through a lot. I've got a couple different techniques that you probably have already seen but I need to show my dyes off somehow. So we're gonna play, play, play and um, and I hope that, I hope my story resonated with you because my parents were pretty extraordinary people in their unconventional way. And, um, and the things they taught in their very unconventional way are lessons that I hope to pass on. So, all right, I'm gonna tilt down for today and we are going to get started. And don't forget, you can post your comment on this YouTube and we will pick two winners next week for this YouTube. No more 100 winners. You got to get in on the 100th anniversary or the anniversary sale to be a chance for 100. You never know. I think there was eight or 900 comments. So that right now means if there's 800, one out of every eight people is going to be a winner, winner, chicken dinner. Yay. All right. I'm going to tilt on down for today and we'll get started. Bye. My mom never did get over not being able to go to, um, to Hawaii with my dad. Oh, there's the fire trucks. <laughs> and I did end up going to quite a few conferences with my dad. My dad took me just about everywhere with him. Um, my mom did too, to some extent. So, all right. So I'm going to show you, well, this isn't quite the make and take that's going on downstairs because we struggled with which one to do. So the girls did this one with the elephant. And this is a stamp, yes, but I've got more to show you. 
but then they did this one. And yes, the sentiments come with it. And actually, this die set has a little baby elephant that comes with it too. It says, you are strong. So I'll show you the die sets a little bit later on. Then we had the one that we did do, which is the giraffe. And you've got the mommy or daddy giraffe and the baby giraffe. And you are loved. Here's it in the green. It really shows it off. There we go. So this is strength is in presence and presents not like presents you get under the Christmas tree. <laughs> so I'm going to start today. So this is the actual make and take that they're doing downstairs right now. This is the one we're working with. And I'm going to start today very, very, very simple. And then we're going to get progressively harder. Today we're going to be playing a little bit with my chocolate box paper. Chocolate box. What is this? This is coordinations paper. They, it is brown on the top, and then whatever the back side is, is what it sands to. So you've got different shades of brown and burgundies, but then whatever's on the back side is what it sands to. Now, this is the exact paper coordinations had, and uh, I wouldn't have done it myself, but coordination stopped carrying it. It has been discontinued and is no longer available, as is magic, which is the same concept, only every sheet is black, but then it sands to whatever is on the back. So we went to Hong Kong, spent 48 hours in Hong Kong, literally, took longer to get there and get home to find this paper because I wanted it so desperately. and nobody was making it so if nobody's going to make it well then i guess i'll have to go out and do it myself which is exactly what i did up till then we were buying coordinations and very very happy with it i'm also going to start with the first die which is my giraffe die and i'm going to pull a piece of coordinations paper out and maybe just this one it is an a4 size you can see the color that it's going to sand to at the very top you get 20 sheets 10 colors, so two of each color, and here's all the colors and what they sand to. And right now, I believe Scrapbooking Made Simple is the only place that has anything like the chocolate, or because it's just, it's just discontinued. Now I'm gonna take this and cut this on up. That should give me plenty. And I think the first thing I'm gonna do is sand it. So I'm going to take a sanding block. Now, Coordinations has also stopped selling their sanding gadgets. So the new ones are by Doris and they have nothing on them. They're just blah. But that's okay. It's the exact same thing. They just took the Coordinations name off of it. And we were looking to also manufacture these. But now that Doris is doing it, there's no reason for me. I was just really worried that these were going to go away. So I'm thrilled that Doris is, is carrying them because I really don't try to manufacture anything I can buy from, from somebody else. Just because you can do it doesn't mean you should. Just because I could manufacture this doesn't mean that I should because then I'd be taking that business away from a manufacturer that we really enjoy doing business with. So I'm going to give this a sand. I'm going to sand first. And you can see you can see that it's starting to become distressed and the color that's underneath it is coming through. This is color core paper and it's very unusual. You don't find it a lot. Um, I'm hoping to bring in the brights and the, uh, the brights and the darks next. I'm trying to negotiate pricing on it because again, nobody has it and, and Coordinations is no longer carrying it. They're just not doing it anymore. This is some of my most favorite paper ever, color core paper. And when I mean color core paper, I mean paper that when you tear it, it's got a color in the center. Unlike, oh, let's say a solid core paper, which would be black. This a regular cardstock, when you tear it, it's the same color all the way through. You also have white core paper. So almost any piece of paper that is double-sided, printed paper that is double-sided, is going to be a white core paper. And if you were to tear it or sand it, it would sand white because it has that printing on it. So your Graphic 45 and your Bow Bunny and your 
Oh, I don't know, Authentique and Kaiser Craft. All of that paper is white core paper. So it's sandable, but it's sandable to white. Now I'm gonna take and I'm gonna die cut this using my die. And today I'm using my Spellbinders Platinum 6 machine because we're also going to use this to do some foiling. So those of you who have a Spellbinders Platinum machine or have purchased a Spellbinders Platinum machine can see how it will work with a go press and foil. Now, we like this machine. We like it every bit as much as our Big Shot machine. The difference is the Big Shot machine is, a, it doesn't have the feature of being compact. The Big Shot machine is always out. It's always open. The Spellbinder machine will open and close. So if you have a space issue, then Spellbinders may be the machine for you. It's going to cut exactly like the Big Shot machine and it's gonna do a beautiful job. It just has that feature of opening and closing. And what I like most about it is that when you open the wings, they sit firmly on your, on your table. They're not elevated up. So if you accidentally press too hard, I worry if the wings were elevated up, if you press too hard, you might break them. This is firmly on your table, so I am a-okay with that. I'm gonna grab the Spellbinders platform, which comes with it, put it in. I'm gonna grab a do not cut plate. Well, let's do a cut plate. I'm gonna put my sanded paper down. I'm gonna put my die down and then I'm gonna send it through. And I need my glasses. Usually I have my glasses on by now because I'm reading names. Oh, I can see! <laughs> oh, happy day! <laughs> all right, I'm gonna put my second top plate on, make sure that I'm all the way on the platform. So the Spellbinders platform doesn't have tabs to it. It's just one platform. And then I am going to roll this through. Do you have to use the Spellbinders cutting plates? No, Sizzix cutting plates will work as well. So if you're someplace when you buy the Spellbinders machine, but the local store that you have or the Michaels or whomever only sells the Sizzix cutting pads, you're fine. It's okay. Ooh. Okay. So let me get out my trash and let me move this out of my way. And I can pick this up and put that over there for right now. And pop out all my little doodads and my little Giraffe is coming to life. It is easier to turn it backwards and to see what needs to be popped out. It's a little hard because it's distressed on this side. You can't even see where the cuts are here. But if you turn it over, now you can see those cut lines really easy. And look at that, bop, 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 and they're gone. So sometimes it's easier when you're using a patterned paper or a distressed paper like this to just turn the paper over and then you can see what you still need to get out. And you can see everything falls out easy peasy. The Platinum 6 has, or uh, the larger Platinum, has a slightly different pressure than the Big Shot. So it doesn't need a precision base plate because it's a little bit tighter, a little bit more pressure. And then I can, maybe on it just a white, then I can put them on. And it's not just brown, plain brown. Now you've got the highlight from the sanding. And if I wanted to, I could go back and I could sand some more. If I saw that I wanted a little more sanding on the snout or the nose, I could go in there. I'm just wanting to make sure that I don't um, tear my die cut, which is why I sanded first. But I can go back in there and sand a little bit more and maybe a little bit more on the ears. A little bit more on the ears. A bit more. 
and I'm using the edge here. I'm not using the full part of the Sandit Gadget, I'm using the edge. And let me tell you, Sandit Gadgets are really inexpensive, and the refills for them are really inexpensive, and they're meant to go with Coordination's paper because they were designed to go with the right weight. Can you use sandpaper that you may have out in your garage? Yes, you just wanna be sure that the, the grit on it is not so harsh that you're going to tear your paper. Look at how cute are they? And yes, there's words that come in the die because look at how much space I had. You bet there's words. <laughs> Aren't they just darling? So it's very, very, very easy to use the coordinations paper and without doing much of, well, it's not coordinations, now it's mine. <laughs> simply define paper. It's simply define chocolate and simply define magic. Without doing much of anything, you let the paper do the work for you. And you really do get just an absolute beautiful, beautiful, beautiful result for it. Okay. So now we're going to move on. Let me put that one aside. And this time I'm going to take the lion. So let me show you really quickly. So here's one of the, here's the draft that I just did. You can see I filled up the space. And it says, yes, you are meant for big things. So you get all the words, you get the die, you get the word up here. And how you use them is up to you. You can certainly use, yes, you are meant for big things on a, with a completely different die, with a graduation die. Now I'm gonna play with the lion because there are six dies that make up the I want it all bundle. And here's the lion. And the words are, you are. It starts with you are. And then you decide what you want it to be. You are wise, you are loved, you are strong, you are positive, you are fearless. Or you are all of these because all of those words are part of the set. So I want to show you, I think, I guess I can use the same paper. I want to show you how this die works. So I'm going to cut a piece. And I'm going to bring over my Platinum 6 machine. And I've got my cup plate down. I've got my Platinum 6 platform, my cup plate down, my die, and then my do not cut plate. Because you always want a do not cut plate. So a plate that stays as flat as possible so when you roll it through, it goes through as smoothly as possible. Now, like I said, this machine is a little bit tighter. It's the pressure point in this machine in your Platinum 6 is going to be a little bit more than your Big Shot. So you may not need to rotate and bring it back. It's going to be up to you. I can certainly rotate this, rotate my die a quarter way, and send it on back up to you. I think you may find that um, that it isn't required with a Platinum 6 machine. All right, let's bring it over here. And let's take it out. Now, can you see that it didn't cut the frame out. This die does a positive and a negative. So this die does a positive and a negative. That means it cuts into the paper. This die cut into the paper. It didn't cut the whole line out it cut into the paper. If I want to cut the whole lion out, I can. Easy peasy. Do I have enough here? Hmm. 
by the hair on my chinny chin chin. Should we give it a try? Bring back over my platinum six. And I've got my Spellbinders platform down. I've got my cut plate. I've got my paper, my lion die, my lion frame to go around him. And hopefully I've got just enough room for him to cut. And let's give it a whirl and see what happens. So send him on through. Roll, roll, roll. It's a very easy roll. You're not going to struggle with it at all. And then if I want to, I can rotate up to you. Oh, well, that one came right off. <laughs> so I don't have to rotate the frame because it cut right away. Just rotate my lion and send them on back just to see how that works. All right. So now I have indeed cut him all the way out. Looky. Let's get our Let's get our little bits and pieces on out. And they fall right out. I did not use any type of a precision base plate. It was not needed. <laughs> Mr. SMS is going to be oh so thrilled. <laughs> so now I've got, let's chop him down a little bit. And I could give him a quick sanding because we're using the sandable paper and it's just going to hit the high points and kind of define him a little bit and give him a little bit of a distressed look to him. And it's up to you if you want to sand him or not. You don't have to. It's up to you how much you want to sand him. And then Let's sand him as well, because he is now completely cut out. Little bit of sanding here and there, and let's tape them on down. Ooh. This is so out of the box for me, this collection. And let's just tape him, put a piece of tape here and get him down. There we go. And a piece of tape over here. And I'm using Stacy tape, which is a double-sided adhesive that comes in a million different widths that will hold everything from fabric to beads and glitter to paper and acetate and metal. So I'm going to put him here and then I'm going to put him here. And for him, I'm just going to make a goober. What's a goober? I take a piece of Stacy tape and put it to my finger and then peel off the liner and then just kind of roll it so it looks like a goober. If you have kids you <laughs> or grandkids, you've seen goobers. Put it down because I just want to get them taped on. And so I, we, I use goobers a lot. So just the tape and then roll, roll, roll and put it right there and put him here. And now you can see the difference.
cut in, cut all the way out. Which do you like better because you have options? But wait, you have more options than that. With most of these dies, you have a lot more options. Let me put him right there and let me kind of clean this out just a little bit with my pokey tool. And I'm going to turn this die upside down and around because I want you to notice that there are some parts of this die that don't have cut lines at all. Like right here, this piece right here. There's no ridge going around that piece right there. There's ridges other places, but not here, not there, not, not in here, not down here. See, can you see that there's no lines around that at all? What does it mean when you're given a die that has these holes in it, but no cut lines? Look at right in here, there's no cut lines. What is the manufacturer trying to tell you to do with that die? They're trying to tell you that it's an embossable die. You can emboss it. You can add more texture to it. So. Let's grab another piece of paper. I'm going to have to pick a new color this time. Um, oh, I don't know. I already started this one, so let's go with this one. And I'm going to cut him out. Only this time, I'm going to use the die and the frame all at the same time because I want him to cut all the way out. So let's bring my Platinum 6 on over. My Spellbinders platform is down. My cutting plate is down. My die is down. My frame around him is down. And my do not cut plate is on top and I'm going to send it on through. So I'm using the two dies at the exact same time. And we're going to go all the way through. And then again, it's up to you. If you want to rotate him, you can, although because this is a frame die, I know. This is an open frame die. I know that that's just going to come right off. So if you want to rotate him, you can and then send him on back. All right. But you said, Stacy, you mentioned embossing. I understand you cut them out and, I, and what I have right now is exactly what I did here. So how am I going to add that embossing element? Well, with Spellbinders, it's a little bit different than with a Big Shot machine. It's not hard, it's just different. Now, the Spellbinders machine comes with their own knock-knock and their own squishy. It's not sold separately. They come with the machine, a knock-knock and a squishy. This is a, an embossing pad and a silicone pad, and these are two peas in a pod. You use these together. And thankfully with Spellbinders, they included it in with the machine so you don't have to buy it separately. The difference is normally with a Big Shot machine, we would go ahead and put down a clear plate or a do not cut plate here. And with Spellbinders, you don't. You take the die and put it straight onto the platform. Now we're going to be embossing, not cutting. So it's important that the cutting edges, you want to see the cutting edges. If you're going to emboss and you can see the metal of the die and then you're going to put your squishy on top and then you're going to put your knock knock on top and then you're going to roll it through. Well, you're going to cut right into your platform. Is it the end of the world? No, it's okay, I promise. If you accidentally cut into your platform, it happens. Don't worry, let it go. Take a deep breath. It's, it's, I promise you it will be okay. Pry the die out because you're gonna have to pry it out and then turn it over so you can see the cut side, so you can see all of those little cuts. 
and then take your squishy. And then take your knock knock. Now, there's this purple and beige, which is very nice. And then send it through your machine. And again, it's the same premise. The squishy, that silicone pad, is adding pressure as it goes under the wheel that's in your machine. Pressure is being forced upon that squishy pad. And it's pushing that paper into the die to force an embossing. And you want to see that squishy come out the back end. That squishy is going to grow and grow and grow because as it's being compressed, it's coming out. It's getting longer. And that's what you want to see. You want to see the squishy coming out the back end. I know it sounds bad, but it is the truth. It is what you want to see. So I can take that and put that over there and take this and put this over here. Get that out of my way real quick. And now you can totally see the embossing. You can see, I need to turn it over so I can see what little holes I need to still pop out. But you can totally see the embossing in it. It now has raised, it's put pressure. That paper was forced into those little holes that have no ridges around them. And it now has even more texture than it did. So up in here, you can see that it's now pushed out. It's embossed. And here, you can see it's pushed out. You can see the lining of where his mane goes. And if we want to, we can take our sand it gadget, or whatever they're calling it now that Doris makes it, whatever name they're putting towards it, sanding block. And again, you can hit it. And where those extra little pushes are, you're going to see more detail when you sand it. Let's tape him right on down. Make a goober, just because I need to be quick, quick, quick. Could you put Stacy tape on the back of a piece of paper and cut him out? Sure you could, and then he'd be ready to go. Absolutely. So let's make a little goober here. And let's make a little goober there. And I just push it to me so I can peel the liner off and the tape stays behind. And there we go, a little bit of a goober. And let's put him down. And let's cut him so I can show you the difference. I was so proud of myself, I didn't cry even a little bit. <laughs> okay, so here he is cut in with no embossing. Could I have I embossed if I just wanted him cut in? Absolutely. You just don't use the frame. Here he is cut out. Absolutely. No embossing. And here he is cut out with embossing. So can you see where it embossed, it's not embossed here, but it is here. It's not embossed here, but it is here. It's not embossed down here, but it is here. It just adds that little extra oomph to give them just that little finishing touch, but you need to have a color core paper or a white core paper to make that happen. If you have a solid core paper, like a regular cardstock, you can sand and sand and sand. It's going to be the same color all the way through. It's just not going to work. Okay. Now the last thing I'm going to show you, I'm going to pop him on off. Last thing I'm going to show you with him, and I'm going to leave him right here because now we're just going to take the frame. 
I'm just going to take the frame and I'm not going to use my squishy and my knock knock. I'm just going to use my spellbinder platform and I'm going to put a cup plate down. I'm going to put the black. I'm going to put my frame and I'm going to roll them through. And we call this die an open frame die, meaning it has no intricacy whatsoever to it. It's just a big old empty space in the middle. And that means you really only have to run it through once and it's going to cut just fine. Let's move out of the way. Okay. Now I can take him and layer him right on top. And then I can mat him onto whatever makes my heart happy. So now I made the black frame to go behind him as opposed to putting him on black and then cutting the whole square out. Maybe that's what you want to do. Maybe you just want to cut in, but maybe you want to cut him out and have the black frame and put him on some other color paper. Easy to do. You've got options. The die comes with both the frame and the, so you get the positive and the negative. That piece of tape is bothering me. My goober moved. Uber moved. Okay, there we go. Let's line him back up again. He just looks so majestic. And strength, strength is in presence. Which one do you like? You can do them all. You've got options. Plus all the words. <laughs> Okay, so we've done this one and we've done this one, just sanding. So you've seen a couple different ways. Now let's move on. Let's move on to the stamp sets. There are three stamp sets in this collection and the stamp sets are five by seven. This is five by seven. So you can do an A2 card, you can do an A6 card, you can do a five by seven card, you can do mats for your scrapbooking, you can do altered art. I have made them as big as I possibly can because I'm paying for the space. They're $9.99 a stamp for a full five by seven. And I've got three of them. I've got the wood background, I've got the um, what did I call it? I called it Safari Wave. <laughs> and then I've got, um, what did I call this one? Tribal Tapestry. Sometimes it gets, it gets hard coming up with some of these names. Tribal Tapestry. So for each three of these, I also have the matching die and I have the matching foil plate. I know. But in case you don't have a foil plate, I wanted you to have the die. So I'm going to play with the stamp set first. And I'm going to be playing with Tribal Tapestry. And yes, I could ink this up and stamp it. But I wanted you to see just how beautiful it is if we glitter it. So I've got my stamp. Here it is. Good to go. And I'm going to bring over my Essentials glue pad. Essentials glue pad sold like this. This is what it looks like in the bottom in the packaging. This is not a reinker. And I need the large size blocks from Ducrafts. So this is the second set that they made for me. They did these on my uh, at my my bequest. I asked, I begged, I pleaded. You get four different blocks, the largest being six by eight. They retail, I want to say, for $10.99 for all of it, including the little storage case. There are companies that sell this size block by itself, 6x8, for over $20. The whole thing is like $10.99, and this is the large size. Then they have the smaller size that I use more often, 
but for my stamps, I needed a big block and nobody made a big block that was affordable. So Ducrest did it for me and I can't tell them thank you enough. So I'm going to put my stamp right on my block. And I'm gonna take my Essentials glue pad. And that's what it looks like. Can you see how yucky mine is? Mine is really bad. Don't ever throw the pad away, no matter how yucky it is. When you buy it, the pad is totally dry. And this is the glue that comes with it. This is not a reinker. You're not gonna put this all over and then come back a month later and hope that it's still gonna work. You're only gonna use enough of this that you need for what you're working on. So I'm gonna put just a little bit of glue on here. I'm gonna zoo, 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 plenty. Put my lid back on. Wipe my finger off. So can you see? Just a little bit of glue and then I'm just gonna rub it in. You don't ever wash your pad. The glue is water soluble so you can wash your stamp and it's gonna come right off. And then I'm going to, just like I was inking up my stamp, I'm gonna glue up my stamp. Okay, put my lid back on and let's grab a piece of paper. It's not too wide. Wahoo, could you? All right. Now I'm not going to put it on my gush mat. I could put this on my gush mat and turn this over and be a traditional stamper. But because the stamp is so big, it tends to get holes. It's hard to get a stamp this size stamped beautifully. So instead, I'm just going to put it right on there and I'm going to give it a nice little back massage. Now, if this is not comfortable for you, I totally get it. You can certainly flip it over and do a traditional stamping. You could even take a stamp, a, a cutting pad on it and kind of press down and get a nice little uh, image from it. I tend to like just giving it a nice little back massage. Make it easy. And hopefully I've gotten over everything and then I'm going to pull it up. Oh yeah. And you can see the glued image. Now for this, when we are using it with glitter, and that's what we're using it with glitter today, glitter, you have to let this go tacky. We used it with foil before a couple YouTubes ago or even last YouTube and you could not let it go tacky. You had to use it right away. This is the one time you want to let this go tacky. So I'm going to stamp another one. I'm just going to see how much glue is left and we'll just stamp another one. Don't know that there's a lot of glue left, but let's just give it a whirl. Okay, gave it a nice massage, pull it up. Oh, I got a little bit of an image. So I'm gonna let that sit over there. Might have a little more distressed look and I'm gonna let this go tacky. Now, what do I mean by tacky? I mean, you need to waft it. You need to go make yourself a nice cup of tea or coffee. You need to stamp four or five of these and then come back, but you can leave this easily up to 20, 30 minutes. You could go answer the telephone. You could go pick up the kids from school and come back and you're still going to be okay, but you have to let it get tacky. If you use it too quickly with the glitter, when it all dries, the glitter's going to come right off. Literally, it'll just go back to being a black piece of paper. So up to you how you want to do it, whether you want to leave it, you want to waft it, you want to stamp a few more, but give it a few minutes or waft it like this and then let's go. So I'm going to take my Nouveau glitter because that's the glitter we're using today and I have got many colors to play with. And I am going to take the back of my tweezers, fussy tweezers, back of my tweezers, and I'm just going to go tap, 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 tap. 
and I'm going to tap this all over. And I'm not using too much because I'm going to mix my colors. And by mixing my colors, I have to agree, I have to understand that I can never put it back in the same pot because now if I were to add the blue, I can't put it back in that goldy color because, well, then it would have corrupted it and it would have blue in it. So you want to use as little as possible because you can always add more. But if you add too much glitter, you can't take it away. You have to start a mishmash pot, which is fine. Mishmash pots are great. And then let's use this blue. And the back of my tweezers, just because it's very simple to use. And it gives you a little opportunity to kind of tap, tap, tap and move it around. Tap, tap, tap. A little more blue. And if you saw how much I'm using, you would be really, it's just that little bit. It really is just that little bit because if I need more, I'll add more. And my last color, let's use this really, really vibrant penny copper color. Tap, tap, tap. So I like the tapestry, the tribal tapestry back. Oh, too much right there. That's okay. I'm not going to worry about it. I'm just going to move. Oh, I got a little much there. Maybe that's all I use because I dumped a little heavy. All right, no big deal. I'm just not going to move that copper everywhere. I'm just going to tap, tap, tap it right where it is. So can you see it just looks kind of like a hot mess until you start moving it with your fingers. And then all of a sudden that hot mess starts to turn into something fabulous. And I can tell you already, I don't have enough glitter on here. So I think I'll go back with that little bit of copper. And now that I know that I need a little bit more glitter, and how do I know? Because I can still feel where it's tacky. I can still see where it just needs a little bit more. And I can tap, 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 tap. And then maybe just a little bit more of that blue because the idea is to have almost nothing as waste tap 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 hey, up in the corners all right so now I'm taking my finger and I'm lightly rubbing it I'm not scrubbing but I'm not being so delicate that you're not even moving the glitter you kind of got to move it around and get it in there. And then what I'll do is I'll take my inexpensive dollar store makeup brush, grab all of that glitter and kind of swirl it all the way around. So I'm sure everywhere that's still kind of got a little bit of glue, get some glitter on it, just in case my finger missed it. Oh, and I had very little waste. That's all the glitter. I don't even know if you can see that on camera. That's all the glitter I had left. Look at how beautiful is that. You still get the detail. You still get all the fine lines of the stamp. It, it, it doesn't make a mess. It's not all over everything. But look at the colors. What glitter do you own? Martha Stewart, Nouveau, um, Stampendous. What glitters do you own? Microfine or Ultrafine work best. And because it keeps the detail, you still have all the lines of that pattern coming through. And by George, it is beautiful. Let's see. So I could take him. I don't know if I'd like him on white, but I could take him and mat him on black. Well, I don't know if I like the black either. I don't know what I like, but I could take him and mat him. Decisions, decisions. No, it's got to be on something better because I've got the, I've got him in black on the back side. So what if I did that? And trim that down just a little bit. Put 
him on there and that on there. It looks amazing and it's glittered, but it's kind of a guy pattern. It's not so feminine and flourish and flurry and floral, but it's got this beautiful, beautiful finished look to it that it's up to you what you want to do with it. It really is. It's up to you. You have options. So you can certainly stamp this with a color, absolutely, or you could stamp it and heat emboss it, but you can also stamp it and use your glitter because with the Essentials glue pad and the stamp, it's still going to keep those beautiful fine lines of the actual, the, the detail of the stamp. And that's really important, really, really important. So like I said, I have three stamps, $9.99, one, two, three. Okay, but we're going to move on. Next thing we're going to move on to is I'm going to play with the foil, but I'm not going to foil. I'm going to play with my wood grain foil plate. Boy, that did not want to come off. Wood grain foil plate, but I'm not going to foil at all. Mm -mm. Nope, nope, nope. I'm going to take it. Oh, am I a pretty shade of, <laughs> of copper? <laughs> I'm going to take it. And I'm going to grab another piece of paper and oh, let's just use one with a white background. Ah, well, I don't know. What do you think? Well, I opened this one, so let's start this one. Now, this is a foil plate and it is to go with your Go Press and Foil machine. But let's do something else with it. Put my things away before I look for them and ask you where they are and you're trying to tell me, but I, I can't hear you, but I think sometimes I really can hear you. <laughs> okay. Let's bring back my Spellbinders machine. And let's put my foil plate with the ridges face up straight onto my platform. And let's put my brown paper brown side down because when I want to sand it, I want to see this teal color down. And let's take my Spellbinders Squishy and let's put it in there. So we are not cutting, we are embossing, but we're not embossing a standard die, we're embossing a foil plate. And then let's take a, let's take a cutting pad and let's put it right over the top. And let's send it on through and see what happens. Now it almost feels like it's not doing anything. It rolls so easy. And yes, you can go back What I'm getting is an embossing. Move it to the side. Can you see that I embossed the wood grain on my paper? Using my foil plate. This will foil. We're going to do something in the go press and foil. But there's my foil plate. Now I can take my sand it gadget and where there's a lifted area, it's going to sand to the color that's underneath the brown. raised. What did I do with my little, what did I do with my guy? Oh, there's my guy. Okay. So am I happy with that sanding? I think so. Now you can totally see the grain, but
but I didn't use an embossing folder. Oh no, I used my foil plate, but I don't have a go press and foil, but I love the plate, Stacy. Okay, well now you can use it in your, it doesn't matter, your big shot, your big kick, your spellbinder, your, your vagabond, whatever makes your heart happy. And then you can trim it on out. I know you all would use your trimmer. I'm going to freehand it as best as possible. And now what do you think of that? Ooh. I wonder what, where did my little guy go? Ooh, or I could put my, I could put my giraffes on there. And it's pretty and it's majestic, but it's still masculine if you need to do a guy card. And now you put your sentiment, you are strong, you are fearless, you are loved, you are, you are. And you have got options. And again, I didn't use this to foil at all. This is a foiling plate. It's to go with the go press and foil. It is a simply defined foil plate. The only place you're going to find this one is here. But I used it with my chocolate paper to make wood grain backgrounds. So your foil plates can be used as an embossing as well. I like that. I'm happy with that. I'm going to tape that on down. And then we're going to move on. But I do want to give you that sandwich one more time. Forgot to tell you to take notes. Sorry. Put it in. If you place an order, put in the note section of your order, YouTube number 267, so you remember. Hey, and have all of you been getting your emails when we move you from awaiting fulfillment to, or awaiting, or, or payment received to awaiting fulfillment, and then from awaiting fulfillment to awaiting shipping? Are you getting those emails? Because we've started. So I want to make sure that you've been getting those emails. So you have a better opportunity, a better way to follow your order along. What do you think? Pretty cool, huh? Okay, let's move on quickly. Just real quick. There's the one that I stamped a little bit earlier. I'm just going to tap on one color just so you can see. And it's been sitting there for a while. And yet the glue is still tacky. And my glitter is holding on. The Essentials glue pad is wonderful. And I can't tell you how many people have told me, you know, I bought one of these a really long time ago, but I never knew what to use it for. <gasps> it's like one of my most go-to tools ever. Okay, so even I put down too much. Although that's not too bad. That's what I'm left with. That's not terrible. But my glitter still held. Hello. And that was quite a while ago. All right. Now let's foil. So foiling. Three foil plates. The same foil plates that the, if I have the stamp, then I have the foil plate to go with it. So here's the tapestry, and you remember that's, here's the stamp in the tapestry. Now I've got the foil plate in the tapestry. Here's the foil plate in the wood, and I used that to go ahead and do my embossing. Then I also have the stamp in the wood, and here's my wave. So we're gonna play with the wave. And I've got it sitting in my Go Press and Foil machine right here. Now, your Go Press and Foil machine and my Go Press and Foil machine are the exact same machine. What is the difference is your die cutting machine. Every die cutting machine is a little bit differently, different, and you're going to have to play with it 
for shims. You are going to have to play with it and give it a chance. So if you're not willing to take an hour, just an hour out of your life to work with your machine, your die cutting machine, whether it be a Sizzix machine, a Big Shot or a Big Kick or a Vagabond or an Express or a Platinum machine, or is it, I don't know, is it a, I don't know what else goes thick. Is it a Genesis? I, I don't even know. But if it can do steel rule dies, if it can do thick dies, then your machine will work with a go press and foil machine. First things first, you've got to turn it on. Just because you plug it in and it is red does not mean it's on. You've got to let it blink. If you just plug it in and you're waiting for it to heat up, because that's what this is, this is a heating element. You're going to be waiting a really long time. So it's got to go red. And when it goes red, you'll be able to feel it start to heat up. You'll be able to feel that heat. And inside I have the plate with the ridges facing up. Now in my Big Shot machine when I use this it generally takes a hundred pound piece of paper doubled. So I take an eight and a half by eleven, I fold it in half and make a hundred pound double shim. In the Spellbinder machine it really only takes one piece, just a, a single sheet of hundred pound paper to okay. heat up. And as this is heating, this is going to continue to blink red. Once it's ready to go, this is going to change to green. So in the meantime, I'm going to grab a piece of paper while I'm letting that heat. And I'm going to cut it. And then I'm going to grab a piece of foil. And this is the foil that goes with the Go Press and Foil machine. It is a heat activated foil, not a toner based foil. So you cannot use this with your Minx or Laminator, just like you can't use the ThermoWeb foil for your, link, for your Minx and Laminator with your Go Press and Foil. Two completely different types of foil. And the way I use my foil is when I'm making something, I always want the foil to be facing me. So if you, this is you and you're holding this facing you and you pulled this foil off, do you want to see the pretty, pretty uh, bronze side or do you want to see the yucky, yucky silver? So you want to see the pretty bronze. So that always should be facing you. You should be able to hold it right out and say, yes, that's what I want to see. Because that's what we're going to put down against our foil plate. Straight down against it. And then we're going to put our shim over the top and we're going to let it get hot. Now, how hot does it get? Well, it certainly gets warm. And if you're using it with children, you absolutely want to make sure that there's somebody there supervising them. I'm looking for my cute little tweezers that I don't know what I did with because it does come with a pair of tweezers that lets you pick it up. Hmm. Well, maybe I'll find them. Do you see them? I do not see them and I haven't seen them. Maybe I forgot to take them out. No, I'm pretty sure I have them out. I just need to locate where I put them. Hmm. All right. Well, while this is heating, <laughs> oh, it just turned green. Look at there. It says it's good to go. Did you see it turn green? Now, every time you take this out, it starts to cool down. This element starts to cool down. And every time you put it back in, it starts to heat up. So if you're going to be doing quite a few foilings, you want to make sure that you're constantly putting this back in every single time. When you're done using it through your Big Shot machine or your Spellbinders machine, you're going to put it right back in. That way you're constantly keeping, oh, I found them. I found them. <laughs> I don't know why that just made my heart so happy. <laughs> I knew I had them. <laughs> All right, so you're going to want to keep it hot. Now, I've shown this with the with the Big Shot machine a lot, so I thought I'd best show you with a Spellbinders Platinum machine. So I'm going to bring the machine back over because a lot of you have purchased this machine or already owned this machine. I'm going to pull this right out, and then I'm going to send it right through. And I'm going to slow my roll. So row, row, row your boat gently down the stream. Merrily, 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 life is but a dream. I would sing Disney, but I think I will get in big trouble. You're not allowed to sing Disney or anything like that on a YouTube or you will get your YouTube pulled down. 
I think Happy Birthday is also acceptable, and I think that the ABC song is okay. So I think I sang You Are My Sunshine, and I didn't have permission to do that. I don't know if that song is okay or not. Now I'm going to put this right back in. That way it stays hot. That way it starts heating up again. And let's open it up, and let's pull it out. Now, here's the tweezers I was talking about. They have a magnet. Oh, it's a heavy plate though. Oh, and I got Stacy tape on it. So, magnet will let you move it right over, and to drop it, you just open the magnet up. If you want to see more about the Go Press and Foil machine, you really want to go watch YouTube number 266. And this is non stick. So, my Stacy tape came right up. Now it says it's hot again, so I'm good to go and to do another one, but let's pull off what we have so you can see. Ta-da! Beautifully foiled, isn't it? It's absolutely gorgeous, and it just used one piece of 100-pound paper as a shim. Just one. And again, now, now you can, I mean, it's up to you. What do you want to... What do you want to put on it? So pretty. Oh my gosh, so pretty. I suppose I could probably trim this. Oh, I'd almost feel bad trimming that. Okay, I'm not going to trim it. But you could and put it on there and mat that. Or I could mat, trim this down and put this behind him and keep this big. I mean, you have such options and it's so pretty. And you can also use it as an embossing. But we also have the dies that match it. So we do have the die sets to go with. So each set has, each one has a stamp to go with and a die because what if you don't have a go press and foil machine? Well, now you have the die and the stamp. But if you do have a go press and foil machine, well, then you can have the die, the stamp, and the foil. And pay no attention to the picture on the front. It's really small. Turn it over. It is a full A2 size. The die is a full A2 size, and the stamp is a full 5 by 7. And you've got them all to do whatever makes your heart happy, whether you want to use them and glitter or you want to, um, gosh, I was playing whether you want to foil, it's up to you. If you want to emboss, heck, if you just want a die cut, you've got lots and lots and lots of options with these. I really tried to make it as universal as possible so that nobody felt left out. And of course you can use the negative. Do not throw this away. Look at YouTube number 200, uh, 266 and I will tell you exactly how to take this negative and put it onto a piece of paper and pull it off so that you get a negative as well. It's beautiful. Beautiful. These are easy to do. And chances are you have most of the tools to do them with. With the exception of my exclusive dies, which you can only find here. Simply Defined and Simply Refined are exclusive to scrapbooking made simple. I love, love, love. That just, that just makes my heart happy. All right. Now, I have got oodles and oodles. And just one more time for that, for that embossing. When you emboss with a spellbinder machine, you are going to take the platform, put nothing on it, not a clear plate at all. I know it seems really, really weird, but no clear plate at all. You're going to take the die, which is the die cut, which is still inside. You're going to turn it upside down. You're going to put your squishy, which is beige for spellbinders, and your knock-knock, which is purple and you're going to send it on through. It's important that you know that there's no clear plate on the bottom. However, if you put a clear plate on the bottom, what will happen? Well, the machine is smart enough to tell you, uh-uh, 
no can do it just you it won't fit <laughs> then you'll go why is it not rolling through and then you'll go back through and you'll say oh yeah i'm not supposed to have that clear plate on the bottom all right when i pulled it off put them back on all right so i've got lots of samples to show you from the girls i'm going to do the storyboards first and just so you know chocolate box and magic right now the only place that's manufacturing it is me so simply refined or defined these are simply defined chocolate box and magic 20 sheets 10 colors two of each color and it sands to the color that is underneath and i'm gonna sneeze <gasps> <Ha -choo. laughs> i'm gonna sneeze <laughs> No editing, it is what it is. Thank you for saying bless you, I appreciate that. <laughs> so if you love these, the only place you're gonna find them is here. It is the actual coordinations paper. I got it from the same factory that did it for them. And please understand, I would have never gone out to find this had coordinations not gone away with it. So now we have storyboards. So I have the six dies that make up the I Want It All package and that would be the lion that I was playing with today. There is a zebra. There is a tiger. There is the elephant set. There is the big giraffe. And then there are the two smaller. So let me show you those really quick. Here is the tiger looking at you. And these are $13.99 unless you buy all six and then they're $9.99 each. Here's the zebra. I hope you like my zebra. He took really a long time to figure out and get right, but he's fabulous. So tiger, zebra. These are part of the I Want It All bundle. Here is the lion. and the words that come with the lion. So you are loved, wise, strong, fearless, and positive. You get all of those words. And we played with the lion quite a bit today. Here is the elephant set. And you get the big elephant and the small elephant. First of all, they cut in. That's cut in, just cut and then put on against black paper. Here's the frame. So if you wanted to frame them, here they are cut out together. So the frame and the die cut and then the words. So love is like the wind. You can't see it, but you can feel it. The reason we have the you and the it pointed out is because you only get one word that says you and one word that says it. But in the saying, you'll need to cut the it twice and the you twice, but you don't get two words that say you, you and it, it. But there's the elephant. And this one's called a parent's love. You like that? I, I, it's so different for me, but it's, it's, it just takes me back to a memory that is so, it just, it just takes me back to a memory. Here we have the giraffe. Yes, you are meant for big things. Those are the words that I got to fit in there. And then we have the daddy giraffe, the big giraffe. And it says, keep your face turned to the sun. Now you can use this sentiment. You get all of these dyes. You can use these sentiments anytime. You don't have to use it with just the giraffe. Yes, you're meant for big things. That's that's a die all on its own. Plus you get the giraffe. And again, they're $9.99 unless you buy or $9.99 if you buy them in the I Want It All bundle of six and $13.99 if you buy them separately. Okay, so that's, yep, that's all of them. So then we have the stamp set of the Tribal Tapestry, there's the stamp set, a full five by seven. Then I have the foil of the tapestry. The foil done, here's the positive, here's the negative. Remember, go look at 266 to learn how to do that. I have the die cut. of the tapestry, so it cuts out and then you can cut the background and have different backgrounds with it. You can well, then I have, you can glitter it with the stamp. Then we have the Safari Wave. So here's the stamp. 
That is a big stamp. That's going to let you do a lot of things with it. Here's the die cut. Here's the frame that goes with the die cut. And here it is in a different, so you can see it in a different color. Now these are not part of the I Want It All collection. These are separate. And here are the frame, uh, the waves in foil. There's the negative. Oh, that's very, there's the negative. There's the positive, but you can orientate it any way you want. This foil has a holographic to it. Wow. How good does that look? Here is our background stamp called Through the Canopy because it's a wood grain and canopies are the trees. And then we have the matching die, which is again a full A2 size die. And then we have the foil plate. And I use the foil plate to actually do an embossing and I didn't foil with it at all. So this is the collection. I got it upside down. Strength is in presence. And then let's do some of the let's do some of the samples. So let's start with Claire. Claire got a little whimsical <laughs> with her giraffe. It's got sunglasses and little flowers in her hair. So this is Claire and her mixed media. And another one from Claire on a piece of wood. And then we have a foil that has nothing to do. It's just the wood grain foil and the you are loved and my must haves. This is Claire. And then open. Okay, I will open. Here's her giraffe again using my must haves and then you open it. Keep your face turned to the sun. This is Claire, and here is my zebra looking at you. And she went very tribal. And then she did the elephant with just the word strong. Just the word strong, and she offset it just a little bit off of black. And then she did, this one's absolutely beautiful. Again, she just used the word strong, but look at that elephant. Look at the colors she achieved on it. Oh, it's just beautiful. Now we have Sharon, who has been gone for a little while. Sharon, well, we're glad to have her back. It's been a little while, so we're glad that Sharon is back. And Sharon has done the tiger we're thrilled actually when we saw her yesterday. Everybody was just thrilled to bits to see her. And here's her lion and she stamped the background with the wood grain and you are wise, strong, positive, fearless, loved. What a great guy card. And here are her elephants. And these really are just dyes and paper. That's all the girls have used is dyes and paper. And then keep your face turned towards the sun. Great job, Sharon. Is this Sharon too? I think so. Look at, yep, Sharon. Big things are meant for you. And this one's beautiful. Oh, this one's Michelle. I wonder if I got Michelle mixed up with Sharon. Sharon, 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 Sharon. Okay, well, Michelle, this one's Michelle. Look at this, is that fabulous? This one's Michelle. Beautiful. 
All right. And then let's move these out of my way because I don't need them. And let's finish getting Michelle. So here we have the rest of Michelle. Look at this. And she just put a little foil in his eyes, just a little glint of foil. She just taped some foil right into his eyes. Fearless. Sometimes you need to be fearless. That's what you need to be. Sometimes is fearless. All right, Michelle, here is her, her, <laughs> here is her giraffe wearing a very funky scarf. <laughs> and <laughs> yes, you need to be strong to do this. <laughs> She drew a very funky scarf, her, her whimsical coming out. Now here, she's used one of the backgrounds for a happy birthday card, one of the foilings. And look at this. This has nothing to do with the animals at all, but look at that. It's a congratulations card, and it's beautiful, all foiled. And here she used the glitter and the dye. Happy fall. Don't you think this would make a great guy card? The dye, this is the die cut of the wood grain. I don't think anybody's ever done a wood grain die cut. I've never seen a wood grain die cut. I've seen embossing folders, I've seen stamps. Haven't seen a, a, a foil plate or a die cut. So we put one together and it looks amazing. Here is your, her You Are Loved and pink. So giraffes can be pink. What a cute little card for a little girl, for your granddaughter, oh, your niece, your sister, your mom. <laughs> you are loved. And here is her zebra. How striking is that? Right? Oh my gosh. Her zebra looks fabulous, and it's just paper. She just die cut it out and put it on a piece of paper that had the, the um, leaves on the back. It really is just, she just, it's, this is easy peasy. All right, let's do Belinda next. So I've got Belinda and her cute little wreath. And you've got the little giraffes poking through. And it says, a sun face. <laughs> oh, just take off the little Belinda. There we go, Belinda. <laughs> and then Belinda did her lion. And she die cut. This is a die cut out of foil paper. Die cut, and then she put it, she backed it on glitter paper. And she embossed the die. So this is the die cut of the tribal tapestry. And it wouldn't be Belinda. So again, this is just the die that does the wave, but it wouldn't be a Belinda if we didn't have a cat and a Halloween. And last, she did the elephants as a planner tag. So if you're a planner, a planner tag. Wouldn't those make cute bookmarks though? And you've got the elephants. Next, you have Doris. Up and one of them says open, so open, open, open. So again, Doris did some that had nothing to do with the animals at all. She stamped and heat embossed. There's nothing to do, but the background's fab. And she used the stamp to do that. Then you have, you are loved, you are strong. And here, she used the wave to make a Christmas card. So she die cut out of probably Craft Perfect Satin Red and backed it and made a Christmas card using the die. And here, she foiled the wood grain and used the words, yes, you are meant for big things from the set that came with the giraffe. This is a great guy card. And here, 
She used, oh, alcohol, inks, and foil to do the background. This is a die cut. This is the die. And she used alcohol, inks, and foil on this one. And here is her lion. Oh, my gosh. See, I don't see these until you see these. So I have to feel them. Yep, that's the die. Here's the lion. You are fearless. Open it up. Oh, Doris, that's beautiful. She used my must-haves to mat the scent. Oh, my gosh, that's beautiful, Doris. This is stunning. Oh, my gosh, and then she used one of my earlier dyes, Happy Thanksgiving, and she used the wave. And she colored it. How, how fabulous are you, Doris? Look at that. Love, love, love. So this is an earlier release that says Happy Thanksgiving. And then her elephant. You are meant for big things. And look at she foiled the whole thing and then put the mat down here. Yeah, that's she definitely foiled that. You are meant for big things. And last we have Elena. So Elena used Oh, Elena used the negative on this one. Oh, that was a lot of work, Elena. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> that looks amazing. But that was, that was a lot of work. Oh, look at her go. Elena likes the negatives. Oh my goodness gracious, that's fabulous. Yes, you are meant for big things. That is amazing. Oh, she really liked this set. She, she likes the tribal tapestry. You are fearless. And look at, she cut out each of the diamonds and popped them up. You are fearless. Elena, I would agree, you are fearless. And then she did a layout. So you've got the tiger and the lion and the zebra with the word adventure ready to mat. So she did a 12 by 12 layout. And then I think I saved the best for last and I hope the SMS girls will forgive me for that. Oh, I gotta put them back on top. One, two. Okay, this is Elena and her, her finds at the swap meet. So she did a diorama, and at the top are the animals. This was a necklace. All of these beads and the animals were part of a necklace that she found at the swap meet. And then she cut it up, took them off the string, and used them for the top of her box, which I'm sure she also found at the swap meet. Oh my goodness. Is that not, I wish, I don't know how to get a whole picture of it. Is that not absolutely amazing? This is Elena. All the things on the bottom were part of the necklace. She sees things. All of the girls, they see things in such an, a, a unique perspective, in a different way than I totally see things. And it just makes for the most stunning of samples. All right, this was really, really long. I know, I'm gonna back out, because that's a lot of me. And I'm gonna say, all right, you guys, it's me, Stacy, Scrapbooking Made Simple. Where are you gonna find all of this great product? Well, this is exclusive to Scrapbooking Made Simple, as Simply Defined is my release. It is. So if you love, love, love it, please come visit us or shop online and get it. Please know that once they are sold out, they are gone. They do not come back. And, um, and I hope you find that strength is in presence. I hope that you find your inner strength in whatever you are doing, or you share your inner strength with whomever needs it most, because because sometimes it's all about what you don't say versus what you do. And, and I'm sure that there are lots of us out there who every now and then need your strength to get through. I know I have. So 
Scrapbooking Made Simple. It's me, Stacy. I will see you next week and the next time with a hundred winner, winner chicken dinners to announce. Forgive me for saying your name wrong. I'm giving it up right now. <laughs> Bye, everybody.